All right, so in this video, uh, we're going to talk about solving uh, both square root and cube, that should, cubed root equations. Um, so, square root uh, examples. So here, um, hopefully this isn't too bad. So basically, when we're solving these square root equations, we need to get x out of, uh, from underneath the radical. So out from underneath the radical. So we need to do whatever it takes uh, to basically get this radical um, off, off the sheet. So the way we cancel out a square root is we square both sides. So to cancel out a square root, we need to square both sides. What I mean by square is an exponent of 2. And if you want, you can put these in parentheses to not confuse yourself. Uh, but to cancel out a square root, we need to raise both sides of the equation to a power of 2. What that allows us to do is on this left side right here, we completely um, cancel out the radical. So this left side is just x minus 4 because I deleted the square root sign by squaring both sides. The right side, 3 squared, hopefully we know, is 9. So squaring the left side got rid of the square root sign, and squaring the right side just left us with 3 squared, so that just gives us a 9. Then we add 4 uh, to both sides, and we get an x value of 13. That's it. Um, the second example over here uh, is kind of the worst-case worst, worst case scenario uh, for us in this uh, unit. So, in order to get rid of the square root sign on the left side of the equation, I need to raise both sides to a power of 2, or I need to square both sides uh, to counteract the square root. So, on the left side, not too bad. It just leaves me with x plus 5. However, on the right side, it leaves me with x plus 3 squared. Now, remember that x plus 3 squared means x plus 3 happens twice. So x plus 3 squared means that x plus 3 happens twice, which means to finish this up, we must distribute. So it leaves me with x minus 5 and then x squared plus 6x plus 9 after you distribute. I skipped the simplifying step. I skipped a step. But uh, when you distribute x plus 3, x plus 3, you end up with x squared plus 6x plus 9. Here's why it's worst case scenario. And hopefully we know this by now uh, since it's you know almost April. But any time we see a quadratic equation, and by quadratic I mean x squared, so in this case, when I distributed x plus 3 to itself, I ended up with an x squared. When we end up with an x squared, we need to move everything to one side because one side of my equal sign has to be 0. So we move everything uh, to one side of the equation to solve our quadratic. Now, to solve our quadratic, we have a couple options here. Um, we can use the quadratic formula, uh, which is in the back of the room. If you want to use the quadratic formula, go for it. Or we can factor, uh, and in this unit, I'm going to make sure they factor. Uh, I think all the ones in the books factor, but if you don't think it factors or you're struggling to factor, just use the quadratic formula, and it's fine. Uh, but I know the one on the test will factor, so there's a hint, I guess. Um, so... I need to factor, and when we factor this, we need factors of 4 that add up to 5. So 4 times 1 is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. So I know my factors are x plus 4, x plus 1. To finish solving,
Oh, wow. You can't see the answers thanks to a desktop trial. Uh, but those that I boxed on there, to solve, we need to set both factors equal to zero. And we get these two answers, uh, which is the work that you can't see at the bottom. But uh, to, to get these answers, we factor the quadratic, uh, set those equal to zero, and we get negative four and negative one. Um, so here we actually have two, uh, two answers. There is a chance for extraneous, uh, so just double check. I know extraneous is annoying, uh, but it, they do exist. We cannot take the square root of a negative number. So anything that makes me take the square root of a negative number can't happen. Uh, so we've seen this before. Uh, I was on our, te our test two tests ago, I guess, where it made us divide by zero. But we can't take the square root of a negative number, so just double-check your answers. If we plug them in and they make me take the square root of a negative number, it can't happen. Uh, these questions on the test, uh, you will have access to your calculator. So if you want, you can just plug in the numbers into the calculator and just see if it works or not. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. The second type of problem is a cube root uh, example. So here we don't have to check for extraneous because we can take the cube root of both positive and negative numbers. So lucky for us, we do get to skip uh, that step at the end. Okay. Um, so on the last one, we had to square both sides to cancel out the square root. On this one, we're going to cube both sides to cancel out the cube root. And there shouldn't be a D up there on cubed. Um, so in order to get rid of this cube root, I need to cube both sides. Luckily, on this example, if I cube the left side, all it does is it cancels out the cube root. It doesn't change the 8x. When you cube both si or when you cube a cube root, they just cancel each other out. That's all that happens. So that's 8x. And on the right side, the cubed simply cancels out the 3x plus 15. Again, it does not affect the 3x plus 15. It just cancels out the cubed root. So when I cube both sides, that just leaves me with 8x equals 3x plus 15. So we subtract 3x. Divide by 5. And we end up with x equals 3. Um, the one on the right uh, is very similar, but when we solve these, we need to make sure that we get uh, the cube root by itself. Uh, this one I wrote a little differently because uh, there's one that's going to look a little different on the test. Remember, due to our radical property, which is the sixth property on the poster at the front of the room, we can rewrite a radical as uh, an exponent that's a fraction. So the cube root and something to the third power are the same thing. Uh, I know the last video was 20 minutes, uh, but I talked about that for a long, long time uh, on the last video. Um, but the one-third and the cubed root, those are the same thing. Um, but before we cube both sides to cancel this out, it needs to be by itself. So on this second example, the cubed root must be by itself before we can cube both sides. So we had to add 3 to both sides. Now I need to divide by 2 to get rid of the 2. So now I'm left with x plus 2 to the 1 third equals 2. To cancel this out, I need to cube both sides of the equation. And the reason this works is also the fourth, yeah, the fourth property on the board 
says that if I raise an exponent to another exponent, I need to multiply. So if I multiply the 3 times the 1 third, that just gives me 1, which gets rid of it. But basically what you need to know is if we cube both sides, it cancels out the cubed root. So the 3 in this case cancels out that 1 third exponent, uh, which just leaves me with x plus 2. The right side is 2 cubed. Don't forget to cube the right side. The right side is 2 cubed, which 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. So we end up with x plus 2 equals 8. So x equals 6. Um, okay, so solving square roots, we square both sides of the equation. And we also need to check for extraneous. Solving cube root, which are the two that's still on the screen, we need to cube both sides of the equation, and the cubing will cancel out the cubed root. But here we do not need to check for extraneous because we can take the cube root of both positive and negative numbers.